I ended up joining the Marine Corps straight out of high school, thinking that was gonna be my new family. And uh, unfortunately, that did not happen. A lot of the abuse that I had growing up happened in the Marine Corps too. I left the Marine Corps, I came back to Spokane and I joined a church that was pretty abusive in a Christian sense. If you left, they figured you were leaving God, so you really couldn't leave that church. At the same time, they really established a foundation of standing on the Word completely and holy, so I really, I held on to the Word more than anything else. And I dived into it looking for that life to the full that God promises. A lot of my PTSD, the triggers and everything were just out of control, and my life was a mess. And I had no real concept of who God was as a father. Um, I couldn't reconcile really 30 years of trauma with uh, a loving father. It didn't make any sense to me. So then I started trying to earn his love and I went to went on mission trips. Um, I've been on seven global mission trips and the first four or five were really about trying to earn my way into uh, a relationship with him. And I had kind of started going to heart of the city, sort of, kind of undercover. There was something that was different and I couldn't put my finger on it. It's God asked me, are you willing to give up everything you think you know about me to know who I really am, to know who you really are? I knew it would probably cost me my church, most likely, and I knew that it could cost me my marriage. Is it possible to be victorious in Christ, no matter your circumstances? Yes, Lord. Then everything started to crash, uh, that I was worthless, that I was meant to be a victim. Still, God kept asking the question, is it possible to be victorious regardless of your circumstances? Is it possible to be victorious? Because I don't feel victorious. My circumstances are not victorious. And then I devoured the word again and prayed again and sought relationship with a God in a way that no religion could have ever possibly answered for me. Everybody has forgotten who they are in Christ. Around that time, I, was, uh, I started brush fires. And in brush fires, I still had, was fighting with this concept of being an orphan, like just feeling like an orphan with God, not really sure how do I be loved in the midst of all this junk that had happened. And at one point during the orphan, um, orphan child class that hit me, it's like, God didn't do any of this. The enemy knew from the very beginning that I'm a loved, amazing child of God. That's who I am at my very core. Regardless of what I've done, regardless of what's been done to me, who God created me to be is beloved. And he has a very specific plan for me to glorify him and for my good. And the enemy knew that. And so from the very beginning, even from the womb, I had to fight to be born. He's doing everything he possibly could to prove to me that that was not true. And for years I believed that what the enemy was telling me was true learning that I'm not an orphan. And I'm, most of us don't walk around thinking that we're orphans. Most of us think, well, I'm good. I'm a perfectly competent grown woman, you know, a grown man or whatever. I got life, I'm fine, I got this. But when you really boil it down and you realize I'm super insecure about that, if people are even willing to go there. When you realize that it all stems from this place of feeling like an orphan because you don't know who you are. Like, you know, Jesus saved you from your sins, amen. But when you don't realize what that does between you and the Father, how that helps you to be reconnected as a son or as a daughter of the Father, you're an orphan if you don't realize that connection. But when you realize what that means and how you have that relationship, you can literally climb on the throne in the midst of his dealings and sit in his lap. Like you have that authority and you are beloved as you do it. And you're not looked at with a, get down, are you done yet? You know, you're not pushed away, but he's open arms every time. That, to me, that changed everything. Suddenly I could ask boldly with no fear. And I could, if he said no, I could be like, okay, I trust you, you got a reason, you're king, obviously, you know what's going on. But I also knew that the moment that I was scared, I could run back up those steps of that throne and sit on his lap and say, okay, I'm scared. He's like, all right, everything else stops. I got you, I got time for you.